Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Four Douro uh, Reds in front of me, all from the same winery, Quinta Nova de Nossa Senhora uh, de Carmo. Uh, and are they all 2011 vintage? They are all 2011, uh, which has uh, it's been a great vintage for port. Let's see if it's a great vintage for uh, Douro table wine. Uh, so the first one is their Reserva. And um, the, I mean, the grape varieties, some of them I'm... Uh, reasonably confident what's in them. They do do 100% Turiga Nacional, but in, in the main they're going to be blends of, uh, of um, uh, traditional Douro varieties. Um, there's one here that uh, it, I'm, I can be a little bit more specific on, but uh, anyway, let's just give this one a whirl. Ah, oh, it's desperately young wine. Um, it's young, fresh, vigorous, oaky. Um, I've, um, I, I, I did, uh, I tasted a set of their, these these guys' wines a few, a couple of years ago, and um, it was, it felt that they were um, maybe slightly over oaking some of their wines. And now I don't know here whether it's um, the quality of the vintage, uh, the maturity of the vines, or the maturity of uh, the winemakers. Uh, but here I notice the oak, but I don't notice it poking out quite as much. Um, as um, uh, as it did on those uh, 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 the, the, the last time round, uh, there, there's a an exotic, almost Kirsch-like character here. It is a, an unashamedly flashy modern style, um, but um, it feels like there is um, uh, quite a lot of intensity and savoury elements to the fruit as well. And it's ripe, but it doesn't feel like it's gone into that slightly overripe, desiccated edge. So uh, it smells good. And this is lovely. Um, it's like black currants. It, it's almost as if someone's got an Argentinian Malbec and infused it with herbs and then added a little bit of um, high class Cabernet from Bordeaux. Can you do that? But um, um, there's, um, there's a juiciness and roundness, uh, but there is this black currant firmness, uh, herbs flitting in and out. Um, and uh, ripeness, this plummy berry ripeness, uh, but um, it's really tasty wine that. I'm going to have another sip. And uh, yet yeah, you notice the oak coming through, um, it giving a little bit of smokiness and toastiness, maybe a little bit of tannic dryness, but um, it's October 2013 here, this is a 2011, well, I'm not sure how long it's been in barrel for, but um, it still feels like a wine that's doing a lot of calming down. And uh, uh, But uh, I think that, that that'll, be, um, that'll be much better in a year or two. Um, I'm always in, in two minds about ageing stuff like this for a long time because I do like that fresh, vigorous herbiness that, 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 that the wine's got. Um, so um, maybe better at five years old than ten years old. But the thing is about the Douro, uh, nobody fully knows because the winemaking is evolving uh, constantly. Uh, the modern era of Douro table wines only really goes back to about 1990. So there isn't the experience of ageing these wines 30, 40 years yet. It will come. Hey, uh, wine number two. Uh, so this is Grand Reserva Classico. The next three are all labelled Grand Reserva, but uh, different types of Grand Reserva. Anyway, give this one a whirl. Well, the, I, the first one was a Reserva. These are Grand Reserva. I'm presu presuming it means it's had a longer time uh, in barrel, which will mean that before it's been bottled, it's had, uh, well, after it's been bottled, it's had less time to calm down uh, than, uh, than, than, than the, the regular Reserva. Uh, so I smell it and I smell, uh, it's one of those wines I've been smelling and sniffing and swirling and uh, each, each time more and more comes out. Uh, the wood thing first. There is this um, young, slightly raw, almost spirity uh, element of wood that's coming through. And that will that will certainly disappear with time. If you taste barrel samples of um, well, Bordeaux, for example, it's been in, it's been in uh, a year old Bordeaux barrel samples. They're really taut and tannic and uh, you notice that slight that, that influence of alcohol and wood. And I'm getting that coming through here. But there's also this uh, exotic, Kirsch-like, um, herby, um, herby richness. And it's um, it feels like maybe the, the, if the first one was on the black currenty edge, this is more on that plummy berry edge. It feels a richer, rounder wine. It's, it's funny because they're not all that different in alcohol. I think they're, they all say 14.5%. Uh, but it feels like that there was uh, more concentration in, in, the, in, in the fruit here. Uh, again, hasn't gone on to that desiccated edge. It smells good. And I don't know if they've got some American oak in there, but uh, there's a, quite a coconutty edge coming through. Um, uh, and you taste it and it's this wood tannin that, um, that is really um, coming through very strongly to, to start with. But then as the wine calms down, 
you're getting these voluptuous um, waves of flavour going going in and out, and um, I it, it's, 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 it's a really rich exotic wine. I'm never quite sure about uh, uh, with wines like this whether they're better had with or without food. Sometimes they are almost too big for um, anything all but the butchest of food and uh, they, they're quite nice just sitting there smelling them and swirling them and uh, letting them come out of their out of their shell almost like you would do with a brandy uh, but uh, it feels very classy and um, as I say compared with a, a couple of years ago when I pre tasted the previous lot um, it feels like uh, there's been some growing up to do and uh, done and um, and um, it's, it's really a lovely wine because despite that power and the depth of wood there's this freshness and elegance going through it. Um, good wine. Um, next one is, uh, again, Grand Reserva, a Referencia 2011. Now, uh, I know that this one has got um, old vines, this idea of all the mixed vineyards that you get in uh, uh, in the Douro. It's, it's based on those, but it's also got a he healthy dollop of what they know to be Tintorori's Tempranillo in there. Give this one a whirl. Now, maybe this one is a little bit guilty of uh, overripeness. Um, I stick my nose in there and it is. Um, I miss the herbiness and um, uh, freshness that was in the previous one. I certainly get intensity, um, but I get more of this um, savoury, almost slightly marmite, um, barnyardy character, which makes me wonder whether there's an ever so slight touch of Britannomyces. I'm not sure. I'm not a. Uh, Brett, um, really, I'm, I'm not really down on Brett. Uh, don't mind a bit of it in a wine, but um, it's when it starts uh, dominating. Let's keep swirling and sniffing and see see what comes out. Because again, what I find with wines that uh, are, are, are really young, um, you taste them and uh, they, they sometimes it's these these flaws that you notice first: uh, the wood, the Brett, the, the other things. And then as they open up, the wine expands around them. And those things that you looked on as being flaws become actually uh, character traits. Um, so the, it, there's, there is more fruit coming around and, and more freshness as I smell it. I should be tasting it now, but this is the third time I'm coming back to tell you about its smell. Um, the more I'm doing it, the more freshness is coming out, the more of this black currenty intensity uh, that I was getting uh, more on the first wine than, than uh, uh, on, the, uh, on, on the regular Grand, Grand Reserva. And it feels like an extra layer of freshness and um, it's, um, oh, wines, they confound you. I'm going to taste it now. Yes, it's got the kirsch, it's got the black currants, it's got the plums and the berries in there. And um, that thing that I noticed, first of all, that slightly barnyardy Britannomyces edge, the wine's gone past it. It's gone, it's, it's, it's still, there's still a little bit of a savoury edge, edge there, but the rest of the wine has expanded past it. Yes, I noticed these slightly raw wood tannins still, but um, as I say, you notice that in, uh, in, in young Bordeaux. So um, I'm not going to uh, carp about that. Um, and... Um, do I prefer it to the one before? It's the, the, the three wines so far have been ones where I, I want to I want to retaste about every two hours for two days and just see how they evolve because um, it's slightly unfair of them to uh, uh, sit down and judge them uh, at one sitting. But they are classy, classy wines, and yeah, feels to me some of this, uh, there's big leap from last time I tried them. Final one. Um, it's a rather uh, strangely shaped bottle um, and um, I, I remember seeing something on uh, I think it was Jamie Good's website and uh, he'd been at the winery and he had tasted a, uh, a wine that was going to be their top of the range still to be named maybe this is the one Mirabilis Grand Reserva again 2011 vintage let's give this one a whirl now, I'm not sure what's going on here because um, I was expecting um, uh, dumb, dumber, dumbest. Um, but um, I, I don't know whether it's the depth of the wine that is meaning that um, the uh, oak that I'd noticed when you first smell it on the previous two, um, it, it, it seems like I, I, I don't notice it. There's, uh, but what I do notice is there's an intensity and a freshness and a perfume um, and it feels like... Uh, a more complete wine. It's a, a, a more um, it, whereas the previous two had been maybe works in progress that will need a few more uh, certainly months and probably years in bottle to uh, 
uh, to uh, calm down and uh, regain their full confidence. Here it feels like there's something that um, uh, you want to think, well, this is actually this is looking pretty good now um, so there is the uh, there is that class that you feel something of the warmth of the duro but there's you you feel also uh, the freshness of the grapes that have been perfectly adapted there so there's the it's the black currant and the blackberries but they're not they're not verging on the jammy um, uh, and um, it, it, there is there is a freshness and vitality here that um, uh, well, it's uh, yeah. If, if if this is the top of the range, I I, I love freshness and vitality in wines, and um, I it, it smells great. And when you come to taste it, then you notice that slightly drying, smoky wood tannins uh, kicking in. But it's this depth and roundness and freshness of fruit. Um, it, it's strange having something that is so concentrated, but it's got the, has got the depth and freshness. Um, and um, what I think is impressive is that in looking for something that if this is the top of the tree they've not gone for something that is um, louder uh, they've gone for something that is uh, uh, th that is really happy in, in confident good it feels good in its skin um, I like its its freshness I like its it, it, the, 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 there's a tannin which is both wood and grape related and um, and this juiciness of fruit, this uh, it's voluptuous, but it's corseted, if that makes sense. It's it's not been allowed to uh, uh, to run to seed, and uh, I, I I think that's delicious. Uh, I would love to see what it will be like in two years' time. I would love to see what it will be like in five years and ten years' time, and um, and I wouldn't be surprised uh, or to see it going going well beyond there. Whether it's going to get better or just change, then then you don't know until you see these wines. As I say, these wines have not had, don't have the the Dura wines don't have a track record for uh, how well they age, but. Um, Looking at this, it's it's a really good range, and uh, I think they've done. Yeah, it seems like they've come on leaps and bounds since the last time I tried them. So bully for them, and uh, uh, yeah, I've, I, my only problem now is there's only one of me, and I've got four bottles of rather nice wine, and uh, what do I do with them? Nice problem to have. See you soon.